Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. We're in the eighth month of 2019, the month of August. And traditionally, August is the hottest month of the year. And here we are in this hot month. We want to use the heat in August to remind us that it's time for us to be hot or on fire for Jesus Christ. So every time you think about the heat, I want you to program in your spirit to be on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we only have, after August, we only have four months left. So we need to focus on catching on fire if we're not on fire already. Now, the latter part of the year, we're going to focus on one of our themes that we started with in 2019. And that is the discipline to finish. The discipline to finish. One of the things that is greatly lacking in our culture and in our society is discipline. But don't worry about it. Because if you have the Holy Spirit, you have the spirit of discipline. Stay tuned as we dive deeper into God's word as we catch on fire in the hot month of August. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Acts Ministries in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts Ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you. Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast. 147 days left in this year, and we've been talking about something that is very important, that is personal responsibilities. There are things that we must do, and we've say, we say here at the Acts Ministries that that it will never happen unless you make it happen. Now, we say that understanding that God has already done his part, and it will never be on God. It will always be on us. So I want to continue with that personal responsibility that we've been talking about for the last few days, and I want to add something to that, another dimension to that. And what I want to add to that is personal responsibilities and opportunities. Personal responsibilities and opportunities. I believe during these last last 147 days that we have left that we're going to be presented with some incredible opportunities. But it's up to us to capitalize on those opportunities. I want to read for you in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 8 and 9. But I will tarry in Ephesus unto Pentecost. This is Paul speaking. For a great an effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. So when you look at that, Paul is saying there's an effective door. There's a great door. A great door is open unto him. And what he's going to do, he says he's going to wait. He's going to capitalize. He's got to be in the right place at the right time. So he says, I'm going to wait in Ephesus. This door is open, and I'm going to wait and take advantage of it. Now, he wants to capitalize on an opportunity that is that is there in the city of Ephesus. But he says there are many adversaries. See, 
this door has opened, and Paul recognized there are some things he must do. He can run from it, but he can stay and take advantage of the opportunities. God is not going to make him stay. He's not going to time down to stay. Paul says he's, he's a reason why he's saying he's going to stay at Ephesus because he want to capitalize on the opportunity that he's been given. I want to read that same two verses, the same two verses in the Message Bible. Paul says, for the present, I am staying right here in Ephesus, a huge door of opportunity for good work has opened up here. There's also mushrooming opposition. So Paul said it was a huge door of opportunity. So we're talking personal responsibility. And if we're really honest with ourselves and we think about it, there are some opportunities I believe all of us have missed. Some opportunities. And that, that's good to understand that. It's good to be honest enough to just examine that was an opportunity that I missed because hindsight is always twenty twenty. We missed that opportunity, missed that chance to do something incredible, to do a good work. And Paul says it's an opportunity to do a good work. This this is eternal things. When you talk about a good work, that's something that is eternal, what Paul is talking about. It's not something that's going to fade away. That's, that's something that's going to impact the lives of people for the rest of their lives, and not just for the rest of their lives, but into eternity. So he says a huge door. Just think about that. Think about how excited Paul is. He says a huge door. But there are adversaries. There are opposition. So when we talk about personal responsibilities, it is up to us to fight through some things. It is up to us to be steadfast and unmovable. It, that's up to us. That's something we have to do. We have to participate in the opportunities that God is opening up for us. So he talks about this huge opportunity. And many people have, they have failed to take advantage of the opportunities or the doors that God has opened for them and opened for us. Because if we're honest, we all have had opportunities and we missed them. We've missed some opportunity. Thank God they weren't e e eternal misses where we missed the Lord Jesus Christ. But there were some financial opportunities. There were some opportunities that came our way, relational, uh, dealing with relationship. There are some opportunities mentally, physically that came our way. And we miss those opportunities. And if we're honest, they are impacting our lives even today. Even today. But what God does, since he's so gracious and since he's so merciful, he allows that season to come back around. But if we think about the opportunities that we miss, Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Axe Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in axeministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. Then it helps us to prepare for that opportunity or another opportunity that will come our way. Being the children of God, God is constantly opening doors for us. Things are constantly happening for us, and you got to believe that. you got to believe that it is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. We have to believe that God is a parent like no other parent that we have ever known. He loves his children and he seeks ways to bless us and to empower us. He seeks ways to give us gifts. The psalmist says that he loadeth us down daily with benefits. And when you think about being loaded down with benefits every day, we don't cash in on those benefits every day. We don't take time to realize, hey, I've been loaded down with benefits and opportunities. But did I take advantage of every benefit, every door that God opened 
for me if a door was open today or if a door was open last week. Thinking about that, meditating on it, having having that sense of urgency that, that says, I have missed it before, but the next time God opens the door, I'm going to be ready for it. Many times opportunities present themselves to us, but we're just not ready for them. We're not prepared. We don't have the resources. We're not in position to capitalize on, the oppo- on that opportunity. And God knows that's been many things in our lives that we look back and say, wow, that was an opportunity. I wish I had another chance at that. So opportunities and personal responsibilities. Personal responsibilities. And we've been talking about this for a few days, and and we've talked about how the man who brought his son to Jesus, that Jesus says to him, uh, when the man the man declared to Jesus, if you can do anything, Jesus' reply was, if you can believe. So the if is not on God, the if is on us. That if is on us. We know God can do anything, but there must be a believing, there must be Faith, we can't be stuck in unbelief. There's an opportunity, opportunity. And we're going to look at some people that missed some incredible opportunities in the Bible, incredible opportunity that was missed in the Bible. So we want to just, we want to think about that and we want to talk about that for the next few days. In Second Samuel chapter 12, uh, starting in verse number 7, and I want to show you this, that it is not God that withholds from us. Many times it is the personal choices and the personal decisions that we have made that causes God not to move because we block him or we're not obedient. And God doesn't reward on a, on a disobedience. So the story of David, and you know this story, it is when David was was in sin. He committed adultery and murder. So in 2 Samuel chapter 12, starting at verse 7, the prophet Nathan comes to David. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house, and your master's wives into your keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be your wife. Now, look at the opportunity that was missed here. Just look at it. As blessed as David was, as awesome as David was, and God forgave David. But I want you to focus on what God says to David. In verse 8, that that last sentence in verse 8, he says, and if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. You see that? And I think that can be applied to to all of us since we're the children of God. There's so much that God wants to give us as the excellent father that he is. But as he says to David, because you've done this, because of the decisions and choices that you've made, that I'm not able or not so much able, but I can't reward evil. There's no evil in God, so he can't reward evil. He, he cannot be a liar. So he says to David, I would have given you much more. There was so much more I want to give you. And brothers and sisters, I believe that that is true for many of us, for all of us. God loves us all. And when we come to him and surrender our lives, there's so many things he want to give us. But our personal decisions, personal choices, when we don't operate in our God-given and divine-given uh, self-control, God has given us 
the spirit of self-control. But when we don't allow that to operate in our lives, then what happens is that we shirk our personal responsibilities and we end up doing some things that, that we shouldn't do and, and, and God holds us responsible for that. So David, because of what he did, because of the murder and adultery, God forgave him because David repented thoroughly. Thoroughly David repented. In the 51st Psalm, David is clear. He says, he says to God, against thee and thee only have I sinned. So David repents. He comes completely clean. He tries not to hold. He doesn't hold anything back. He doesn't blame Bathsheba. He doesn't blame Uriah. He doesn't make excuses. He takes responsibility. That is so important. So, so very important. Because King Saul would, wouldn't take responsibility. And he ended up being rejected rejected when God came to King Saul and asked Saul what he had done he said it was the people he said the people he blamed the people Saul blamed other people for his mistakes he was personally responsible for that so even though when you look at what Saul did most of us would think that's nothing compared to what David did but because David repented and he changed and he, he was completely, totally truthful and honest. We see that he goes in his, go down in history as probably the greatest king in the history of Israel. One of the greatest kings ever to rule on the planet. But King Saul, who was the first king, because he would not take responsibility for his action. And then we see the rejection that comes. So personal responsibilities and opportunities because we don't take personal responsibility we don't take we, we, we don't if we don't realize that we are responsible then what's going to happen is that God God will not reward us and God will not bless us the way we need to be or the way we want to be blessed for mobile giving text the amount you wish to donate to 501 302 4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.